reaching out to the fallen, sharing the pain and suffering, standing with those in tears of despair, listening to heart-rending cries, providing solutions to daunting challenges. Gametha, for the people, by the people. TV One. News first. Janata the Samaga. Good afternoon and welcome to the news on TV One. For the news first team, I'm Shehan Ranathunga. First, let's take a look at your headlines. Opposition questions the presence of Maldives Speaker with Sri Lanka delegation at COP27. <laughs> 217 detainees remanded over Kandakadu brawl. 240 million rupees worth of heroin discovered from Berwala. High seas heroin bust. Police says heroin belongs to Harakata's associate. System down at passport office results in delay in issuing passports. Now first up in news here at home. The Department of Immigration and Immigration said that there is a delay in issuing passports on Tuesday due to a system issue. Immigration and Immigration spokesperson Pumi Bandara told News First that the department has suspended accepting applications for passports adding that the system is being restored. In other news, MP Premanatsi Dolavatta presented a motion to Parliament on Tuesday seeking to amend the Local Authorities Elections Act to allocate 25% of the nominations to those below the age of 35. The MP informed the parliament that the younger generations must be given the opportunity to contest. However, leader of the National People's Power, MP Anurakumar Disanayaka, warned that this amendment should be used to delay the local government elections beyond March 2023. SLFP MP Daya Sirajai Sekara also noted that the amendment should not be used to delay the elections. The former Maldivian Attorney General has criticized Maldives Speaker of Parliament Mohammed Nasheed for attending the 27th Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change or COP27 as a member of the Sri Lanka delegation. The matter was also raised in the Sri Lankan Parliament as well. The 27th Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change or COP27 opened recently. Sri Lanka is represented by the Speaker of Maldives. The international media reported on this as well. Was there no one from the ruling faction to represent the country at COP27? Was there no one qualified from the parliament to represent the country at COP27? Isn't the respective minister qualified to take up this role? Maldives Speaker of Parliament Mohamed Nasheed is representing Sri Lanka at COP27. And the international reports are not in favour of Sri Lanka. We have the Prime Minister and the ministers present in the house. I wish to ask, why is it that you decide to bring disgrace to the country? Is there no one qualified in Parliament? Heads of states have been summoned to COP27. Heads of states were summoned to the UN Fund as well. Most of the heads of states did not attend because of the funeral of the late Queen. Some joined via Zoom and some met in person and some sent delegations. COP27 is an important meeting that the President must attend. There is no issue in that. Hey, 
ओबतुमागे प्रश्ने एक नंग एक मटा दालन है परिसरी संबंध अंतर जाति का माध्यवलत मालदीवी ने प्रश्न पैन नहीं रहती है ना मालदीवी ने कतार ना है कि तुम्हारे कोहो में तो लंकाओं नियोजने कर लेगी Sri Lanka police said 8.34 kilograms of heroin was discovered hidden inside a house in Ambe Pitiya Beruwala on Tuesday. One suspect was arrested in a joint raid carried out by the Police Narcotic Bureau and the Sri Lanka Navy. Sri Lanka police said the value of the seized heroin is over 240 million rupees and the Police Narcotics Bureau is conducting further investigations. Now in other news. Sri Lankan authorities revealed that the massive haul of 300 kilograms of heroin seized on the high seas south of the coastal city of Hamantota was sent to Sri Lanka by a wanted criminal identified as Ranmalli, a close associate of underworld leader Nadun Chintaka alias Harakkata. The Sri Lanka police said Ranmalli and Harakkata are currently in hiding in Dubai. A special operation conducted by the Navy in coordination with the Police Special Task Force and Police Narcotics Bureau of Hambantota led to the interception of a local fishing trawler carrying over 331 kilograms of heroin, including packages worth approximately cross street value of over 6,662 million rupees and apprehension of six suspects on the 5th of November 2022. Subsequent search led to the recovery of 300 packages of the substance stuffed in 12 sacks, which had been concealed in the trawler. Thus, the Navy named six locals aboard the fishing trawler used for this illegal act on the 5th of November. Moreover, the Navy and police STF held a dinghy, which is suspected to have been made ready to fetch the stock of narcotics from mid-sea and arrested three males and one female suspect involved in the land network of this racket in an operation mounted off Nilvella and its beach area on the 6th of November. Meanwhile, the Police Narcotic Bureau is conducting further operations in search of more suspects in connection to this illegal act. Including the latest seizure, the Sri Lanka Navy has held drugs with a gross street value of over 23.12 billion rupees during operations in 2022. Now, 217 detainees who were arrested for their involvement in the recent brawl at the Kandakadu Treatment and Rehabilitation Center were remanded. Police spokesperson and attorney SSP Nihal Taldua told News First that the detainees were produced to the Polon Narua and Hingurakkoda Magistrates Courts and were thus remanded. Commissioner General of Rehabilitation Major General Darshan Hetyaraji told News First that an investigation is underway over the brawl. The Commissioner General of Rehabilitation said that a five member committee comprising of senior ranks will investigate the brawl at the Kandakadu Treatment and Rehabilitation Centre. The report prepared by this investigation body will be handed over to the Justice Minister upon completion. Sri Lankan authorities said that scores of detainees held at the Kandakadu Treatment and Rehabilitation Centre fled the premises following Sunday night's brawl. According to reports, the cause of the brawl was a dispute over the use of a bucket used for bathing at the premises. 547 detainees were at the Kandakadu Treatment and Rehabilitation Centre at the time of the brawl. The Commissioner General of Rehabilitation said that steps will be taken to start assessing the damage caused to the facility following the brawl and will be carried out by the government officers. On the 29th of June 2022, a brawl broke out at the same facility, resulting in the death of one detainee while while 400 others escaped. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe has called for a full report on the Kandakadu Rehab Centre incident. The President's media division said that the necessary steps needed to be taken to avert recurrence of such incidents have also been called for following discussions with Justice Minister Vijay Dasaraj Baksa. Now the Associated Press reported that 300 suspected migrants have been rescued by Singapore authorities after their boat started sinking. The report said that one person aboard the vessel was identified as a Sri Lankan citizen. The Associated Press reported that a Sri Lankan citizen on the boat contacted the Navy on Monday and said they were in distress and the Maritime Rescue Coordination Centre in Colombo sought help from Singapore, Vietnam and the Philippines. Navy spokesperson Indika De Silva said that the Singapore authorities later notified Sri Lanka that the people on board the boat had been rescued and were heading to Vietnam. Report confirmed the presence of one Sri Lankan on board the vessel and the identities of others will be ascertained after they land in Vietnam. 
Now in other news, Dr. Harsha De Silva is the chairman of the Committee on Public Finance and he told the parliament on Tuesday that the state expenses would increase by 1,657 billion rupees in 2023. Uh, producing the report of the Committee on Public Finance to parliament, the chairman said that the committee approved the appropriation bill for the year 2023. He warned that as per the appropriation bill, the state expenditure will also increase to 7.9 trillion rupees from 6.2 trillion rupees in 2022. The chairman of the Committee on Public Finance to Parliament warned that it is impossible to determine if the state can generate revenue to the level of its own expenses and expects the government to elaborate on their measures to bridge the budget deficit. He called on the government to cut down on its expenses. State Minister of Finance Shehan Sema Singh issuing a statement said that the Chinese ambassador to Sri Lanka, Ki Zheng Hong, said that he would extend his full support to Sri Lanka's debt restructuring process. Chinese ambassador to Sri Lanka, Ki Zheng Hong, had an extensive discussion with the Sri Lankan State Minister of Finance Shehan Sema Singh on Sri Lanka's debt issue on Monday. The Chinese embassy tweeted that the ambassador had reiterated China's continued and concrete support to the island to overcome various challenges. Now in other news, Vimal Viravansa criticised the absence of members of the ruling party in the parliament on Tuesday. Darshan Denipiti Metuma absent. Saman P. Herat Metuma, W. H. M. Dharmase and Metuma, Varaha Navika to the Matuma Gasiment. The Andupakshi, Mantriurungi, Gudak, Prasatino, Kauru, Tavilatne, Hanitne, the Egulu Karanemi, Vipakshita, Prasnahanati, and Avastav. There are many issues at the government ministers, but none of them are present here, nor anyone questions about it. They are hijacking the opportunity that the opposition has to raise questions and mix questions according to an agenda and deprives us from our opportunity to raise questions. So you should take steps to stop this because they are not only wasting our time to raise questions but also waste the public money spent to hold these sessions. There are some people who obtain salaries and still raise issues. Some of the ministers are not aware of this. If you allow them, they will speak up on any matter they want. Every MP has the right to raise questions and as per the standing orders in the absence of any minister, another can represent them and raise those questions. Your level of knowledge is very disappointing. <laughs> There are answers for these issues, so when they target ministers and raise allegations, it gives a wrong perspective to the public. These people are not even present in the parliament during very important discussions. So don't try to score marks by speaking on false information. Now, a special announcement made by the Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, regarding the current situation in the country and investigation of the Easter attacks was presented by Reverend Father Cyril Gavani Fernando, the spokesperson for the Archdiocese of Colombo. The brutal repressive acts done to suppress the civil and human rights activists and citizens of this country who speak up against bribery and corruption have been developed to an unbearable state. We strongly condemn the repressive acts done by using the Prevention of Terrorism Act to arrest the civil activists and the peaceful protesters. We cannot at any point accept how the IUSF convener Vasant Mudalige and the Venerable Gal Vavasir Matero are being detained under the detention orders without presenting charges for over 75 days in an illegal manner. Along with this, the releasing of those who have been detained against several charges on the East attacks, as per the recommendations of the AG, is what we feel an act of deceiving the public. So we strongly condemn the acts of the AG's department who work according to agendas of politicians rather than following the duties vested upon them. Sri Lanka's Parliament Speaker Mahindayapa Abe Vardhana announced the President's decision to summon the armed forces to maintain public order. 
The speaker said the president had decided to act according to the powers vested in him by Section 12 of the Public Security Ordinance, Chapter 40, and issued the order to call out all the members of the armed forces for the maintenance of public order in the area specified in the second schedule of the Extraordinary Gazette. The seventh memorial of the late most venerable Maduluave Sogdatero was marked on Tuesday. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Dinesh Gunavardhan attended the memorial for the late most venerable Maduluave Sobhidatero at the Kote Sri Nagavihare. A blood donation campaign and a medical camp also took place at the Kote Sri Nagavihare. The most venerable Maduluave Sobhidatero not only worked for the Sasan at home but also worked for the Sasan overseas. He was never afraid to speak the truth and he always stood by the truth. The Mahasangha and politicians were present for the memorial. Floral tributes were also placed at the memorial opposite the Apegama premises in Batramulla to mark the 7th death anniversary of late most venerable Madhulwave Sobhidatero. The event was organized by the National Movement for a Just Society. In other news, journalist Tarindu Uduwaragedara was summoned to the CID on Tuesday morning. The journalist Tarindu Uduwaragedara was summoned to the Criminal Investigation Department to record a statement over a post he made on his personal Facebook account. Now, Sri Lanka's Health Ministry announced on Tuesday that 80% of monkeypox cases are transmitted through sexual activity. Dr. Rasanjali Hitti Arachi, the director of the National STD and AIDS Control Program of the Health Ministry said, monkeypox cases are most common among same-sex activity. Monkeypox is a viral zoonosis with symptoms similar to those seen in the past in smallpox patients, although it is clinically less severe. Monkeypox primarily occurs in Central and West Africa, often in proximity of tropical rainforest, and has been increasingly appearing in urban areas. Animal hosts include a range of rodents and non-human primates. The first cause of monkeypox in Sri Lanka was detected last week and Dr. Rasanjali Hetyarachi told Newsfirst that the patient is in good health. It was confirmed that he had contracted monkeypox after he had visited a clinic for STDs. The National Child Protection Authority has launched a separate investigation into an incident where grade 5 students from a school in Millionaire were brutally beaten for allegedly stealing money from a school teacher. The Sri Lanka police is also investigating the incident. Several grade 5 students from the Millionaire Primary School in Horana were accused of stealing money from the bag of a school teacher and were punished by school teachers and the teachers themselves handed over the student to the local police. Parents alleged that students were taken away by police intimated by electric shock treatment inside the police jeep and dropped back at the school. The National Child Protection Authority summoned the police officers in question, the principal and the teachers to record their statement for the investigation. Now the following is a report of months of hard work destroyed by encroaching wild elephants in Migaswava, Madhurigiriya. About 300 families live in the Migaswava village in rural Polanarua and agriculture is the main livelihood of over 1,000 people. Many people have resorted to vegetable and fruit cultivation to find their daily expenses. Encroaching wild elephants had destroyed the maize, banana, coconut and manioc cultivations in the entire village. Farmers say that it was a herd of wild elephants from the Somavate Reserve that caused the crop damage. Even though there is an elephant fence to protect the village from wild elephants, the villagers allege that its electricity supply is not sufficient to stop them. Attention was also drawn to the problem of wild elephants in parliament today. For the purpose of solving the human elephant conflict, prepares at a proposal by taking into account both the national and international expert opinions. Ideas have also been presented to build at least two elephant barriers for this. 
maybe by using a fence, planting trees or by digging trenches or whatever the method. However, plans on eradicating this problem are underway to provide permanent solutions within the next one to two years. In other news here at home, the executive committee member of the National People's Power, Namal Karunaratna, urged on the necessity of solving the fertilizer problem this season before giving free fertilizer for next season. He expressed these views while attending a program held in Tolangamu, Kegol, on Monday afternoon. Then, on the work, poor again a kata. Now the government, the agriculture minister, is speaking about fertilizer, but only about urea. There are three types of fertilizer. Basic fertilizer, DSP, which is the fertilizer used at the initial stage. In case of paddy cultivation before harvesting, they use DSP mud fertilizer. And now these people are saying that these will be provided for the Yala season for free. This is because of the objections raised by the people due to the absence of these fertilizer. Before providing it for the next season, they need to provide for this season. Is there any discussion about Mundi fertilizer? No. Even they are unavailable. Both these types are unavailable. On the 6th of June, a decision was taken by the cabinet to bring 150,000 metric tons of fertilizer. Yesterday marked five months since the decision. But up until now, the farmers did not receive the fertilizer. So this is the current situation. All they did was waste time on commissions. <laughs> A press conference was called yesterday by the Union of Depositors who deposited money in the finance company and are currently facing problems. The finance company was not a loss-making institution when it was taken over by the central bank in 2009. It made money in various ways like by selling land, vehicle leasing and providing loans and invested depositors' money. But none of these were done after it was taken over by the central bank. Owing to the trust of people strengthening through the takeover, people deposited money without fear. But the central bank looks into it in a private depositor mindset. And after the liquidation, the depositors have been made helpless in such a way that they cannot even imagine what will happen to their money. Even though investors raised the issue on many occasions, they did not allow those investors to interfere into this by imposing various restrictions. In the name of one million campaign, money was collected from these helpless depositors in 2019. So we were deceived and deposited money. This very institution was closed on the 15th of February 2019, causing a great amount of injustice. We took money from other banks and deposited here, trusting the CEO and other employees of this institute. At that time, the central bank regulated the finance company. So the central bank should fully accept this responsibility. We always point the finger and say that the central bank is to be blamed for all of this. On the 24th of November, there is a case in the commercial court requesting permission to liquidate so we can't say what will happen after that u.s national security advisor jake sullivan has confirmed communication channels between washington and moscow remain open despite the war in ukraine Speaking in New York, Sullivan said it was in the interest of the U.S. to maintain contact with the Kremlin, but he insisted officials were clear-eyed about what we are dealing with. It comes as the White House refuses to deny reports that Sullivan has been leading talks with Russia to prevent a nuclear escalation in Ukraine. Sullivan, who is said to be one of the most senior advisers to the President Joe Biden, still pushing for discussions with Russia and maintaining contact with Moscow was in the interest of every country who is affected by this conflict. Sullivan told a public event in New York that the Biden administration had quote-unquote an obligation to pursue accountability and pledged to work with international partners to hold the perpetrators of great war crimes in Ukraine responsible of what they have done. The war in Ukraine is a reason to act faster to tackle climate change, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said at the UN Climate Summit COP27. 
He said in his first international appearance since taking off his court, climate and energy security go hand in hand. End quote. Leaders from 120 countries are meeting in Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt, to discuss the next step in curbing climate change. Key topics are compensation and support of the most affected countries. Sunak said Putin's abhorrent war in Ukraine and rising energy prices across the world are not a reason to go slow on climate change. They are a reason to act faster. He added, quote, we can bequeath our children a greener planet and more prosperous future. There is really room for hope, end quote. In a series of speeches, leaders urge rich countries to stay the course in stopping further climate change despite the war in Ukraine and global financial problems. And that's it from the news team for now. For the News First team, I'm Shehan Manatunga. Have a great day. News First News Alert, Obi Changa Mudurakataneta, Obe. Dialu Paribu Gikeknam, English Alert Seva Valabagani Matter, in FU Lesar, Singlish Alert Seva Valabagani Matter, in US Lesar, Tanglish Alert Seva Valabagani Matter, in AT Lesar Taikere, I see Hatte Adder, Sin Karaner.